zoo workers, which animal is the biggest jerk in your facility? Have worked in various wildlife rehab slash research facilities, including a bird sanctuary, where we did mist netting, setting up very fine nets between trees to catch songbirds, and banding of wild birds for research slash population counts. Handled everything from thrushes to woodpeckers to crows to sparrows, and the biggest jerks? Chickadees. Most of the birds were scared, or curious when we took them out of the nets. The chickadees? Were freaking mad. There was something bizarrely respectable about it. Here I'm holding a bird smaller than the palm of my hand whose head I could crush with my freaking thumb, and it's going. You may be bigger than me, but if you don't let me go I will rip your freaking cuticle off. On an aside, the woman who owned and ran one of the wildlife rehabs where I worked had rescued and care for wolves, bears, lynx, mountain lions, the one animal that put her in the freaking hospital, a white-tailed deer, gored the crap out of her. Ooh, same facility, our female black bear loved rainy days. She'd wait until a school or tour group got up nice and close to her enclosure, then give the wet ground an almighty whack with her front paw. Sprayed the entire group with mud. She did it every damn time. Do you introduce them to people with chickadees guys out? I'm not too ashamed to admit it took me at least 2 minutes to get this. Nice one. I don't work there, but I have visited a popular wildlife rehabilitation center in South Africa called Mohala Hollow, I know right great name, about 7 or 8 times. They have at the center arguably the world's most famous honey badger, called Stoffel. Now I'm sure none of you need an introduction to how freaking savage these animals are, but this particular bastard has actually featured on multiple TV shows, because of his antics. In the first few years of his life at the center, he dug his way into the lion enclosure twice, and attacked the alpha male of the pride both times. When he kept digging his way under the wall of his enclosure, it had to be rebuilt 2 meters deeper into the soil. When he opened up cracks in the concrete and escaped, those had to be covered with metal sheet. When he used rocks slash sticks to create a tower and climb over the wall, they removed them, only for him to steal as a keeper's broom and climb out using that. I know many more stories of his antics, but my favorite is how after years of living on his own they decided to find him a female companion to join him in the enclosure. First thing Stoffel did, stood on her head and used her to climb over the wall. When you started talking about a world famous honey badger, I was like pft how, is a particular badger world famous for its antics? Then as you started describing it, I remembered the YouTube video on it. That's probably the best example of an animal being a supreme jerkazoid. It's crazy man. I remember seeing him at only a few years old, and they already had these crazy stories about him. Every year I went back he had done something new and ridiculous, and now he is like a big deal you can buy Stoffel t-shirts and crap. X is a keeper here. Orangutans are super smart, super strong, and super jerks. Well, some are. We had a female who, if you were standing in front of her indoor enclosure, would spit and hit you in the mouth every damn time. And grin. She grinned so big when it happened. Lesson learned. I heard about one who fashioned a key from a piece of wire, and would pick the lock on her cage, and go scampering merrily about the place. They could never figure out where she kept the key, till they put a bunch of cameras on her she would put it in her mouth, when the keepers came around. Ha. Huh. I wouldn't doubt it. The same one from my story, was led back out into the yard, but a rake was left behind from cleaning. She would not shift back in, so we could get it. The keeper called her over to the grated door, made motions and talked in hopes of getting her to bring the rake. Surprisingly she did. She would not give it up though. So, the keeper got out the bag of skittles he had, gave her a couple, then motioned for the rake. She broke a piece off, and handed it through the door. OMG. So she got more skittles, he got another piece of rake. This went on until all of the rake was back inside. Smartus. When I worked as a zookeeper intern, I think the biggest jerks were the emus. It was the summer of 2004 and the emu shared an exhibit with the wallabies. The exhibit wasn't high security. It was essentially a fence made of dried bamboo stalks. Wallabies are super cute, and while we didn't have an area where they are in the same space as visitors, some zoos do. Wallabies are not typically threatening in any way. The emus were big jerks. They constantly pecked at the wallabies, and were generally a pain. 
but they weren't separated because they didn't cause actual injuries. The wallabies eventually got their revenge and freedom. One night, one of the emus ran into the fence and sort of gently impaled itself. It wasn't badly injured, but it did fall down after the injury. What did the wallabies do? They kicked it in the head until it was dead. The wallabies and emus were separated the next day. Side note, zebras are jerks too. Our zebra shared an exhibit with the giraffes. We had a giraffe platform where visitors could feed the giraffes carrots, grain, and other goodies, according to the giraffe diet, of course. The zebras wanted the goodies, and would kick the giraffes, so the giraffes would drop their food, then the zebras would eat it. So no one here will believe me but, literally haram. About a year ago I interned at the Cincinnati Zoo in the primate department. I helped prep diets, clean enclosures, develop and deploy enrichment etc. I didn't get to work directly with gorillas, because they were deemed too dangerous for non-employees, but I walked by their enclosures often, and could see them through the housing. We had two family groups, one usually hung outside for part of the day, and when they came in, the other would go out. Well Haramb was in a group with two females and he usually was separate from them, when they were indoors, and hung out at the far end of the indoor enclosure. Well I had to walk by his enclosure, to get to another animals to clean it, and every single time I walked by his enclosure he would charge the enclosure door closest to me and slam it with his fists. Every goddamn time. Scared the crap out me every time. Apparently he came from a zoo where the keepers were less than kind and they were all guys, so he associated guys with bad memories. A good portion of keepers at Cincy Zoo were ladies, so he loved them just fine. I wasn't there at the time that this has happened, but I used to volunteer at the Omaha Zoo, and there was the story of Fu Manchu, the orangutan. Apparently, one of the keepers found Fu and some of his buddies hanging out outside of their enclosure, and ushered them back in. When it happened again, the keeper thought someone was leaving the enclosure open. It happened so much that someone was about to get fired over it. Finally, someone witnessed Fu climbing through an air vent to get to the door. Pulling it open enough to expose a gap, then pulling a piece of wire from his mouth, and using the wire to undo the latch and open the door. He'd been hiding the wire in between his gums and lips to engineer his escape. Only a peen move, because he almost got people fired. Otherwise, it was slick as hell. All I can picture is a couple orangutans hanging out outside of their exhibit having a smoke, and a zookeeper coming up and saying alright boys put em out, breaks over back to work. Not a facility I work at currently, but we had a kookaburra who would catch lizards, snakes, frogs, and even earthworms, so he could feed them to you. You would be standing around doing your job and all of a sudden he shows up on your shoulder trying to force feed you lizard he whacked on the ground 30 times. Oh by the way, if you covered your mouth, why not try the ear? The ear is a great place to put a dead lizard olive earthworm. The image of a kookaburra trying to force a lizard into someone's ear is hilarious. Eat your frickin' lizard. I assume this is how humans eat. Right now it's the short-tailed leaf-nosed fruit bat. I'm an intern in a well-known zoo. We have a wet cave filled with probably 1000 of these frickers. The door is surrounded by a wire cage. When we go to feed them, we just let the door open and let the bats fly in the cage. When we leave we have to herd them into the cave. As an intern I'm not allowed to touch them. So I put my hand up by them to guide them. Except they don't like that, and they'll fly right in my face and hover there for a few minutes. One day I was by myself doing it, and one of the little frickers would not get in the damn cave. I stood there for like 10 minutes doing jazz fingers and he just hung there. Arsehole. Do you have any rabies scares? I know bats carry it, and I don't know if the zoo population has it. I would assume you would have to be very careful with gloves and such, if one were to try to bite. No we don't. None of our bats have rabies. That same asshole ended up biting my keeper. She came to see what was taking me so long. After he flew out of the cage, and she had to grab him. Our local zoo used to have peacocks walking around freely. Those little frickers hated people. Chased lots of small children before they got kicked out. Many zoos allow their peacocks to wander freely. I'm not sure why, but I've seen it at multiple zoos in the last few years. They're fairly domesticated and handle crowds well. On top of that, they aren't migratory and don't need a large area to range in. 
Also, they stay where the food is. Finally, if one does wander, the surrounding neighborhoods know who to call if they see a peacock in the right yard. Aldebrit tortoises. They have an outdoor pen, but obviously they are stuck in a smaller indoor enclosure during the colder months. They won't leave you the frick alone. I was watering the plants at one point, when two big males came up behind me and pinned me to the wall. I pinwheeled my arms and fell onto one's back sort of got to ride him. Other times, they decide to sit right in front of the door. So you're stuck until you convince them to move. You certainly aren't going to move 500 pounds of turtle on your own. If you put a squeegee against the wall, they simply have to knock it over and sit on it. Got the hose out? Yup. Gotta sit on it. Bringing out food. Sit right in the feed troughs. When you've been alive from before the civil war, you tend to sit a lot. That's solid logic right there. The geese are pure evil. Once saw a goose at the zoo taunting some bird in an enclosure. He was all Hong Kong. Had her asshole you can't do crap in there. I'm free to eat dropped hot dogs and scare toddlers, but you're stuck in there. I saw the aftermath of a goose that got in a Komodo dragon exhibit and apparently thought it could take the residents on. The zookeeper was mildly amused when she explained why the exhibit was closed for cleaning and mentioned geese arpines, so it deserved it. I used to volunteer at a zoo and the biggest jerks were the ravens. They were really smart and awesome for enrichment activities and for teaching's classrooms, but if they got bored they would find a way to entertain themselves. One particular time a raven decided to place some of its food right outside its caged enclosure to lure a peacock. Once the peacock got close and started to eat the raven would sneak up and pluck the tail feathers off of the peacock. Corvids in general last March frickers. I had a crow, raven, frick knows I'm not whatever you call a bird specialist that hung about our garden. Barbecues were a nightmare, anything shiny left unsupervised was almost 100% guaranteed not to be there within 30 seconds we eventually found out where he was stashing it and it was like a treasure trove of stuff from all over the neighborhood apart from that he was a chill dude used to come and sit next to me when i went out back to smoke although in hindsight i'm thinking he may have just been trying to steal my lighter check the feathers crows have two pinion feathers ravens have three so whether it's a crow or a raven is a matter of opinion not a zookeeper, but our zoo has a cassowary named Sir Winston Churchill and his lady, the female mate. Apparently he is quite the escape artist. They had had to rebuild the enclosure several times because he climbs the fence. They put him in a fully enclosed exhibit and he managed to unlock a door. They put him in an indoor exhibit and he refused to eat until they put him back outside where he instantly climbed the fence and escaped. Now he and his lady have a little enclosure with a super high fence and round the clock camera surveillance off the path of the zoo trail. You can still go see him, but you wouldn't know he was there unless someone pointed him out to you. As far as I know, he hasn't tried to escape recently. He just really didn't want to be on display. So he made life hell until he got what he wanted. Our zoo had the same problem with yellow footed rock wallabies. They escaped, so the zoo decided to make the fence higher. Then they escaped again, so the fence got even higher. After they escaped for the third time, zoo added electric fence and nets. I wonder if they managed to get out of that too. The escape artists at one of the wildlife rehab places where I worked were the coyotes. The adult coyotes, I discovered, were kept in enclosures where the fences were very high and curved inwards at the top. This was because the coyotes would run in rings along the base of the fence, gaining momentum, then continue the run. Up the fricking chain link continuing around and around in rings, until they were up and over. Bizarre. Also, raccoons had to be in triple locked cages, because guaranteed they would figure out how to unlock at least one. Imprinted raptors will try to mate with your head, if you're not careful. This is especially problematic, when you're dealing with large birds, like eagles. Fortunately the largest bird that's attempted this with me is a Mississippi kite, so I'm safe for now. Parrots will try this as well. I've got three parrots, and my cockatoo is a bit of an ass sometimes. I stopped letting him hang out with me when I'm at my desk because he'll occasionally try to mount my mouse hand. I do not approve. He tries to be suave about it sometimes too. Still prefer him directing his sexual frustrations elsewhere. You are being shagged by a rare parrot.
The hippos at our zoo will crap on their tails and helicopter it all over people. That's what every hippo does, they are marking territory that way. You people now belong to me. At least King Hippo didn't have a special move involving pooping. I used to work on a boat that did marine wildlife and birding tours. Every spring when the orcas came north into our bay they'd come up to the boat to check it out and say hi. They'd rub up against the boat and swim around. We'd let kids touch their fins. They were quite docile. The only animal we were ever attacked by was an arctic tern. Terns are really small for seabirds, but they are peens. They are so aggressive because, for god knows why, they build their nests on the ground, rather than in trees. There are trees around, they could use the nests to build trees in. But no, they'd rather just terrorize anyone who makes the mistake of coming near their nest. Foxes, weasels, people, bears, whatever. Terns will attack you. One day we were watching an arctic tern chasing an eagle around. At least a mile offshore. A tourist on our boat was trying to capture it with a telephoto lens, and the turn didn't like this guy's attitude, so it tried to peck a $2,000 lens to pieces. Those are the ones that say Backstreet Boys right. Q Ryan losing it. Monkeys. Definitely the monkeys. They are cunning, fast and incredibly strong for their size. And they would find any opportunity to mess with you. Ironically, we had an enormous tiger that had been part of a circus, and while it weighed a couple of hundred pounds, and could have killed you with just a swat of its paw, really just wanted to be petted. It was more likely you would be crushed when it pushed its head against you for a good scruffing. The amount of drugs in was given probably made it soft in the head, or it was probably grateful to not be forced to do crap it didn't want to do every day. I work with squirrel monkeys, and I go in there with a little bowl of live meal worms for training purposes. One day one particular monkey was being fairly grabby, reaching for my hair and whatnot. I had closed up their cage, and was getting ready to leave, when I noticed I hadn't slid a hat shut. I moved closer to the fence, to do it and someone I don't know who, but I'm betting it was the grabby one shot a hand out of the cage, reaching for the meal worms, and knocked the bowl out of my hands. I don't know if you know this, but individual mealworms are hard to pick up off the floor, especially when they are crawling away as fast as their little legs can go. And so then of course all the monkeys are on the ground reaching through the fence to grab the worms, while I'm trying to scoop them back into the bowl as fast as I can. That must have been the greatest thing ever, like holy crap free worms everywhere. I did also have a capuchin monkey throw food at me. I ignored it, because I was observing a different monkey at the time, and out of the corner of my eye I saw the one that I assumed threw the food come up to the fence and stick her arm under the door, to try to reclaim the food she'd thrown at me, but it was out of her reach. Come on. I used to work in a cafe at a zoo. The wolves escaped twice whilst I was there. Once during the night, another whilst the zoo was full of visitors. Keepers got them back in. Another zoo nearby had a mass breakout of their timber wolves. All got shot as they got too close to residential areas. Beware of the wolves. Just start howling and all the timber wolves will have to stop what they're doing and howl too. I know it works, because I saw it in some nature documentary about a city full of animals. Gari, quit it. You're gonna start a howl. I volunteered at a zoo inside an amusement park once. Their featured exhibit were two brown bears rescued as cubs from a man's basement. One of the bears wasn't an asshole per se, he just never wanted to exit into the enclosure, disappointing a lot of the guests. He always stayed in the den, interacting mainly with the keeper and the other bear during nights and feedings. Huge sweetheart of a bear, he let me feed him peanuts from my hand, and gave me a high five. I assume anxiety, since he wasn't accustomed to so many people. If I remember correctly, yes. He only ever entered a enclosure a few times a month. Otters are the biggest of us around. CTRL plus F otters check. I used to work at a place that rotated keepers every so often, so they would get experience with different types of animals. Everyone freaking dreaded the otter rotation. Hard to train, biting little sons of bitches. Humans. Have you tried shooting tranquilizers at it from a safe distance? Try on me please I won't mind. I don't work in a zoo, but I have been working in reptiles farms over the years. 
My jobs have various snake species that are large and bitty, but nothing venomous. While snakes hooks are always around they are rarely used, because after a while you just get used to being bitten, and learn how to work with the animal and read its body language. The exception to this was a single female Florida king snake. She was permanently angry. It didn't matter if she had been fed, if she was breeding, if you were giving her water, or if you just walked past her cage. She was in a constant state of aggression. We did leave a snake hook by her cage, because as soon as it was opened she would immediately start striking and hissing. After two or three strikes she would start getting even more angry, and would start getting excessively posed, to the point where she would lean so far back she was practically upside down before striking. As soon as you closed the cage and walked away you could heard the thuds of her still striking and hitting the front. I used to work at a reptile rescue, like an SPCA for reptiles, and, separately, a reptile show. They did birthday slash office parties etc. Well we had this one reticulated python that was an asshole. He was owned by one of the owners and the only person that could handle him was his owner. No one was allowed even in the room when he was being fed or taken out at all. If you passed by the enclosure he would strike at you, he would hiss, he was just a general asshole to everyone. I've dealt with those kind of snakes before, so it wouldn't have frightened me much if he hadn't have been 18 feet long. We had two Burmese as well, both were around 10 feet long and loved people and liked to nuzzle your neck. It was kind of adorable really. Not a zookeeper but this was told by my former coworker who now works in a well known zoo. She tells me that every morning they do a facilities check and animal head count at least, and one, two hours before the zoo opens. It is not uncommon for a few escape artists to get away from their enclosures mostly snakes and reptiles that are easily counted for after a quick sweep. For my coworker who does not scare easily, what bothers her the most was this one big cat. Can't remember if it was a cheetah or an ass. Either way it was a female big cat that stalked her every morning from the cages and glass enclosure. She first thought that the cat didn't like her because she was the new hire. But after months and almost a year, this big cat clearly wanted her for lunch. Told me she had a few near misses with said big cat. I'm thinking lioness. The cheetahs at my zoo are big friendly kitties that play with a zookeeper and are best friends with a dog. Obligatory not a zookeeper, but from what I've read, cheetahs are really nervous animals. The dog acts like an emotional support animal it'll keep the cats calm and redirect their energy by playing with them. Dogs are too good for this world. We have lions and the females are always jerks to the male lion. We had to separate them multiple times because they would beat the crap out at him. To be fair he is a pussy, no pun intended, like the girls roar all the time and he tried once and puked instead. Once he had a seizure and they ran over to just beat, not claw or bite but just warp the crap out at him with their paws. Now the females are growing manes, because they are so dominant, our souls literally took his manhood. Funny but also sort of sad. Yeah he's a sad little boy, but we still love him. Cassowary. If anyone need to enter their enclosure there had to be two others in riot gear, nothing makes you crap yourself more than scrambling behind them, and hear the karate kick off the god smashing a shield behind you. I'm 100% certain velociraptors still exist, and they just pretend to be these assholes when they lose their teeth. Velociraptors were one a smaller and less dangerous than cassowaries, 